share your memories, and preserve the past. Join us to find out how. Hello and welcome to Community Conversation, a show about the people, places, and things that are happening around our town. My name is Kevin Vent, and I'm your host today. And today we're talking about the Mass Memories Roadshow, kind of an exciting event that's going on in our town, and we're going to have a number of different guests here talking about the different aspects of this event. With me right now is Heather Cole and Rachel Baumgartner, and we're going to be talking about specifically what is a Mass Memories Roadshow. Heather? Sure. Um, the Mass Memories Roadshow is a project out of UMass Boston. Mm -hmm. um, it's out of the library at UMass Boston and co-sponsored by Mass Humanities. And the goal of the project is to visit all of the communities in Massachusetts, documenting Massachusetts history through okay. family photographs and stories. So it's really not dealing with kind of the big picture history that we think about, but personal or family history. Yes. And we believe that everyone has a story to tell about their family, about their family history, about their connection to their community. So our goal is to collect all those stories okay. in one place. How are we going to do that, Rachel? Well, I um, got a grant to do the project for okay. the Reading Public Library and some sponsors, in the Reading um, Antiquarian Society, the Historical Commission, RCTD, <coughs> and English at Large, which is based in Medford but serves a lot of um, new families in the Reading area. And what we're trying to do is to capture those families. So it will be held at the Reading Public Library on October 24th from 11 to 3. And Heather can tell you exactly how it's going to work. I've, <laughs> I've heard from her, and I've seen videos, and, and we're preparing for it, Sure. Um, trying to get the word out. Yeah. So we're getting the word out about this project, yep. letting people know they, if they have uh, photographs or, or poetry or yep. whatever it is that has to do with, with, with their family background in yep. this area. We're specifically looking for photographs. Okay. Um, people can bring other things, but we're really focused on photographs. Right. So we're asking people to go through their photo albums, their scrapbooks, their attics, their basements, and bring in two or three either family photographs or mm -hmm. photographs about their connection to Reading. So it could be the photograph of their great-grandmother, who was the first person to immigrate uh, to this country and settled in Boston and then moved to Reading. Right. It could be a photograph of an event that took place in Reading that they participated in. They can be old photographs, they can be new photographs, they can be snapshots, they can be formal photographs, whatever is important to them, their family, and their connection to Reading. And we're asking folks to bring two or three of them to the library. So let's say day. someone brings a photograph to the library on October 24th. What's going to happen? Oh. Is it going to be pinned to a bulletin board? <laughs> <or? laughs> no, there, there will be some experts there to handle the photographs okay. from yeah. UMass and Mass Humanities, mm -hmm. as well as uh, the same number of trained volunteers who either work at the library or okay. who have offered their services that day. So things will be handled very carefully. Um, we'll actually have a series of stations set up throughout the room in the library. People will first come in and we'll ask them to fill out some paperwork, okay. um, giving us permission to digitize their photograph and make it part of our digital archive at UMass Boston. Mm -hmm. We'll also ask them to fill out a form for each photograph that they brought, telling us as much as they know about the photograph. Sure who's in it, when it was taken, why it's important to them. Um, and then they'll move to a number of stations you okay. know, throughout you know, the half hour or so that they'll be with us. We'll, we'll scan their photograph in and collect their paperwork. Um, we'll ask them to sit in front of a camera and talk for a few minutes mm -hmm. about why the photograph they brought with them is important to them. Okay. Uh, we will have um, someone that will take a photograph of them holding the photograph that they brought that we okay. then print out as like a souvenir for sure. them to take with them. Sure. And we'll also have archivists from the New England Archivist who will be there to advise them on how to care for their photograph. And we'll have folks from the Historical Commission and the Antiquarian Society talking to them about, you know, generally about Reading history and, and where their photograph and their story fits in. Great. So to be clear, you're not asking people to leave their photographs no. with you. Nope. No. We are asking, they'll bring it in, we'll scan it, and we'll give it right back to them. Okay, so we that's... don't keep anything. We're making what we call it a digital surrogate okay. of the photographs. All right. And yes. that will be archived in the, in the Massachusetts State Archives. It actually, it's at, it archives at UMass at Boston. At UMass Boston. Okay. Um, so it becomes part of the UMass Boston Archives. It mm -hmm. also um, will be available for people to see on our website, okay. which I'm sure you'll post at the end of the program. <laughs> 
we're also going to catalog it as part of the Reading Public Library collection. Okay. We've been working over the last three years in digitizing the collection with some grants from the Reading Celebration Trust. Mm -hmm. And that's what these pictures are that we brought with us. Okay. We had them at the street fair the other day, and oh, they generated sure. tons of interest. And yeah. um, people were, all of a sudden they said, oh, I have pictures, I have pictures. You know, it might have sure. been 1972 when they graduated from high school, or it could have been 1950 when they were on the football team. Right. There are right. lots and lots of connections that people have. Um, so we're really looking to uh, draw a connection in our community through common family history in the past and really mm -hmm. letting, showing what has happened and why people yep. uh, um, were in the town and what they were doing. And, and it doesn't matter if your family has been in Reading for generations or whether you just moved to Reading yesterday. Okay. Either way, we believe that your story is important and you have an important contribution to make to the history of the town. So that 10, 20, 100 years from now, people will look back and see your photographs and, sure. and recognize how you contributed to history. Sure. So when someone comes to the library on the 24th, uh, they'll be directed exactly where to go. Right. And, and there'll be all sorts of tables set up, and it will be very easy to figure out. We'll have lots of volunteers. Right. It will be in the library meeting room. Okay. And if someone is pressed for time that day, they may make an appointment ahead of time oh, okay. for a time slot. And to do that, you call the information desk at the Reading Public Library, and the number is 781-942-6703. All right. Well, terrific. So it sounds like a fun event, and it sounds like something that I think people are going to really uh, gravitate to. Uh, we're going to take a moment and, and change up people. We'll be back in just a moment, and we're going to be talking a little bit more about the uh, Mass Memories Roadshow. Thank you for watching. The Hotspot in Reading on Haven Street for more than 15 years. Owned and operated by Ace Folds, it serves the finest in muffins, scones, and other assorted pastries, all made by Ace on the premises. Coffee by the cup, the half pound, and the pound. All flavors come in both regular and decaf. The book note features publications by local authors. Watch for upcoming author events. The Hotspot is a meeting place, a Haven Street institution, and a town tradition. 85 Haven Street. I get well, welcome back to Community Conversation. I'm your host, Kevin Benton. We're talking about the Mass Memories Roadshow, an event that's happening at the Reading Public Library on October 24th. Rachel, we're talking today about the, uh, the Memories Roadshow, the Mass Memories Roadshow, and we want to uh, find out some of the types of things that people could bring. Because I, I can see where people might not think that, that some of the things are really significant. Right. So we have a couple guests that are going to give us some examples. Could you uh, just tell us who's here sure. today? Sure. I asked a couple people to bring some things because I thought they had very different okay. types of things that they could sure. bring. Um, Nikita Shah is a page at the Reading Public Library and is right. a junior at Reading Senior. Senior at Reading High School, excuse me. Yes, <laughs> she advanced a year very quickly. And Russell Carter, a former firefighter and a okay. photographer who's one of our neighbors in Reading and has some wonderful pictures to share. Because I can certainly see where people might think that the, thing, the pictures that they have are not significant enough exactly. to, to, to be history. Um, and yet I think probably what we'll see here is that even, even the personal things um, our history and the history of our commonwealth and, and our town. Right, the personal and the impersonal. Yeah. I brought a picture of a building because okay. it was very, um, it's something that helped us a lot. Okay. Um, when uh, we purchased our house, it didn't have a porch on it. Okay. And soon after we moved there, somebody came to my door and said, do you know that your house is in the memorial volume? Well, I had no idea what the memorial volume was. <laughs> so um, I got a hold of a copy of it and um, we saw the house with a porch on the front. So eventually we were able to put the porch back on the house oh, okay. and there were little um, decorative brackets and we couldn't tell what they were like and of course you can't buy brackets like sure, that. Sure. So we used Photoshop and blew up the picture of the house mm -hmm. and then um, tried to make the brackets look exactly what it looks like. So um, I have the picture of the house oh, okay. and the various pictures of oh, what sure. um, the house was in 1890, in 1893, and in 1978, in 2003, and then after the porch was replaced. Oh, and it made a big difference in sure. what the house looked like yeah. to be able to do that. And so I think you can use old photographs for many purposes. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. this also tells a little bit about the history of Reading. Right. Somebody Absolutely. tried to modernize things yeah. in um, the 60s, and uh, there was a rotten porch, so they took it off. <laughs> Great. Well, uh, Russ, uh, you were told that you were a former firefighter in town. And what are the kinds of pictures that you have examples of well, that people could that, bring to the Mass Memories? The one show? I have today was the hurricane in uh, 1938, September oh. 21st. I was sure. 13. 
I got out with my box camera as soon as I could get my bicycle to go down the street. <laughs> and this, this one here is right opposite from the library at 77 Middlesex Avenue. Okay. And so that's terrific. So, so not only do you have a photograph, but you actually have a story that goes with that well, as well. The story is that after I got on the fire department a few years later, we had a fire at that house. It was in August 1966. Oh, wow. Okay. And after the fire, the next day, uh, it might have been that afternoon, but the next day, when they were investigating the fire, I went up with my camera and took a photograph of the front of that house. Now, okay. it, I was amazed because at that time of the fire, I didn't realize that the house had been had a tree go down in front of it. Okay. But when I got home and, and started thinking about it, and this is a photograph that I took at the time, okay. or the, shortly after the fire, when they were investigating the sure. chief and so sure. forth. Yeah. And this is the same house, just across the street from the library. Mm -hmm. And the reason I took f photographs for the fire department was usually when there was something odd, unusual, like that. And this is a photograph of what caused the fire. A, the, it was a defective camp stove, uh -huh. and the person that lived in the house lighted it in the house. Mm -hmm. And I guess you could use the term, it blew up. He yeah. threw it through the porch window to the porch, and of course that uh, yep. distributed the gasoline, and that's sure. what caused the fire. It isn't very often that you could have a fire that you could really trace it yeah. so simple as to what caused the fire so we have um from russ here we have a real just one house it isn't even his house no but he has a personal history with this house that he's able to share yes. with photographs yes. and with the story and that's the type of thing that we right he has a whole collection of pictures oh, from sure his little does. box camera of the hurricane <laughs> of 38 and there's a, a huge renewed interest in the hurricane of 38 as anniversaries come up mm -hmm. and as hurricanes hit other parts of the country right. and the world, people wonder, was it ever like that in Reading? Yeah. And so, you know, it might be the blizzard of 78. Someone yeah. certainly has pictures of that. I would imagine they do. Yeah. <laughs> so what kind of pictures have you brought for us today, Nikita? Uh, the first picture I have is a picture from my parents' wedding. Oh, okay. And it has my mom and my dad, and then my dad's parents and my mom's parents. And the reason I chose this is because it's really interesting to see like what my parents like look like back then and yeah. like just to see like pictures from their wedding because mm -hmm. it's like it's I wasn't there obviously. obviously so it's really cool to see like what happened back then and like how they had their wedding compared to like what it is now. Okay. And the second picture I have is when my parents first bought our dry cleaners, Nick's dry cleaners okay. in Reading. Right. So we had all gone there like way really early in the morning just to see it because we were like, oh my gosh, a new dry cleaners like because we had moved to Reading, and so it was really cool because we got to like document our first time in our dry cleaners together. So, so these are really pictures that uh, uh, document your personal family history in Reading, very different from what Russ has, but still significant to what the Mass Memories Roadshow was trying to exactly. do. Exactly, and a hundred years from now, or even twenty years from now. I, I hope Nick's dry cleaners <laughs> is still there, but if, say, he moves to a different building sure. and somebody comes to the library and they say, now, what was in that block? What was the store that was there? And business history is very difficult to follow. Sure. So any connections to business are very, very valuable. Now, when your parents were married, were they married? Did they live in Reading when they were married, or is this? No, they lived in India okay. before. So they got married in India, and then they moved to the United States. So my brother and I are, like, first generation in America, so that's also interesting to see like sure. the difference in like cultures. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're looking at personal family histories of the people in Reading, even if they weren't necessarily in Reading when those personal histories exactly. happened. Exactly. There are many, many um, students in the Reading schools who are first generation sure. from kindergarten right up through high school, yeah. and many families who are also first generation. And I think it's fascinating whether the families came from Brazil or somewhere in Asia or Russia, or whether someone has adopted a child sure. from another country. They yeah. have another story to tell. Absolutely. And those are the kinds of things that we're trying to collect so that they'll be preserved and you know, down the road people will be able to look back and find a picture, which is a, a wonderful part of history besides words. So we want to make sure that people understand that the, the photograph didn't have to happen in Reading exactly. um, to be 
significant to, to what we're trying to do here in this, in this uh, Mass Memories Roadshow. Uh, but it, as long as it impacts Reading somehow, just by the fact of your presence in Reading. Right. And you're <laughs> Reading, it, you can be someone in a neighboring town even. We're not going to turn you away. Um, <laughs> it's just to try to get Mass Memories. And I sure. think um, we're the first Mass Memories Roadshow on the North Shore. I know okay. they've done a lot down on the South Shore, Norwood, and some of the other towns down there and in Boston and Dorchester. So it's very exciting for us to have it in Reading. So you don't have to be a Reading resident to come to the Reading Library on the 24th and participate in this? No. You just October have to be 24th. October 24th, right. right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, that's excellent. So you, know, you had mentioned the Blizzard of 78 is something people might have pictures of, but it's not just disasters um, no. that we're looking oh, no. for. Um, um, it could be one of the, um, I mean, Reading had that track team streak for what was oh, yeah. it over 25 years yeah, the boys sure. track team was undefeated and yeah. out meets it could be somebody who helped move the library from the old library yeah, building to, the, to building. Yeah. Hi, um, the Highland School building it could be their high school graduation it could be somebody building that Robert Leathers playground that yeah. isn't there anymore sure. um, a campfire group scouting um, town forest I you know the day that the oil trucks spilled and we were without right. water sure. there's so many things that have happened here that we'd like to have I was a pastor of the Baptist Church. There was a fire at the Baptist Church in the 60s that burned the building down. And I'm sure there are people out there that have pictures of that type of thing also. Of course, right. it's more disaster-oriented. but <laughs> right. Or it could but, be a uh, celebration. Were you, were you there that day? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Okay, there we go. <laughs> right. I think we already have some pictures of that building. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure, yeah. Right. Um, they, I know uh, I was thinking also of, of you know, pictures like the 350th that happened. Right. And, and that, you know, I'm sure there are lots of pictures out there of mm -hmm. that kind of thing. And, uh, an event that happened in Reading, or uh, we talked. You talked about houses. You know how many buildings have been, or houses have been torn down and been replaced. And wouldn't it be interesting to see if people had pictures of what was there before? Right, houses that have been moved. Mm -hmm. There are lots of houses in Reading that have been moved, and sure. people have a special interest in houses. I think uh, that's one of the biggest questions we get: is Do you have a picture of my house? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> unfortunately, unless it's in the architectural inventory or it right. happens to be in one of the um, bishop books. It's hard to find pictures. Yeah. yeah. Well, who knows what will come out of the woodwork here when we well, uh, start yeah. to ask people to bring their pictures. Uh, we have pictures of a house here that probably people weren't even aware we had pictures of from back in 1930s after a hurricane. Right. Uh. <laughs> there will be a way if someone can't come to the road show. Um, Mass Memories has set up a Flickr website specifically okay. for Reading, and so people can, if they're not in town that weekend, upload their pictures to Flickr and put them sure. with the right tags on it so they'll be right. still available. Okay, excellent, excellent. So just to recap, uh, any kind of pictures that have to do with your family or personal history, um, now that you're part of Reading or the local towns, you can, uh, surrounding towns, you can bring that into the library on the 24th. And uh, the process we already described, but if you miss the process, you'll come on into the library and there'll be stations set up in the meeting room where you can have uh, your photograph scanned and your picture taken with your photograph and your personal story taken and all of that. Exactly. It sounds like a fun event. It sounds like something that uh, will be really useful. And uh, As a historian, as a former semi-professional historian, um, having that kind of database available in the future is going to be really uh, helpful. Uh, when we start to compile local histories and as we continue to compile local histories in the future. So, it will be. So that, that sounds like a great event. Well, we're going to take another break here and uh, we'll be back in just a moment talking a little bit about why it's important to do this and why we really need your help and support in, in making this event work on October 24th. So we'll be back in just a moment. The Hotspot in Reading on Haven Street for more than 15 years. Owned and operated by Ace Folds, it serves the finest in muffins, scones, and other assorted pastries, all made by Ace on the premises. Coffee by the cup, the half pound, and the pound. All flavors come in both regular and decaf. The book note features publications by local authors. Watch for upcoming author events. The Hotspot is a meeting place, a Haven Street institution, and a town tradition. 85 Haven Street. I well, welcome back to Community Conversation. We're here still talking about the Mass Memories Roadshow, a real exciting event that's going on at the Reading Public Library on October 24th, where you have the opportunity to bring your personal and family photographs talking about the history of your family and melding that together to talk about the history of Reading and the surrounding towns. Uh, we have a couple extra guests here today with us, Rachel, or at this point, so that we haven't had in this show thus far. Uh, who's with us now? Okay, I'd like to introduce you to Kathy Greenfield, who's the chairman of the Reading Historical Commission, and Everett Blodgett, who's a member of the Reading Antiquarian Society and very actively takes care of Parker Tavern, among many other things. They both are 
The Historical Commission and the Antiquarian Society are two of our partnering organizations ah, okay. in this grant. And okay. they both have a great perspective on history, and they're sure. supportive of the work we do in the library and back us up with lots of information when we can't find it. Excellent. So we've heard a lot about um, already about what is going to happen and how it's going to happen in the Reading Public Library and uh, how people can bring in their personal photographs and tell the stories of their family. Why do you think this is important, Heather? Why, why is this something that we would want to do? Well, this, the history that people have in their family photographs and their scrapbooks and their albums is history that's not collected by any other library or archive or museum. Mm -hmm. And um, it's projects like this that you know, preserve these and, and, and document these so that this history continues. Otherwise, they're lost. Sure. Um, and specifically in, in Reading, uh, Kathy, why, why do we want to collect this information and in, in this history in Reading? Well, the reason it is important to the Historical Commission to collect the information is that the Historical Commission as a town body is charged with recording um, and identifying and preserving mm -hmm. the historic assets of the town. And we generally think of those as tangible things, like sure. buildings and documents, um, residential and commercial buildings, uh, maybe property valuations and birth, marriage, and death records. And we certainly do maintain and preserve all of those things. But the, um, the stories and the photographs that people will bring to the roadshow mm -hmm. and that will then become part of our local archives are going to add a different layer um, to that fabric of Reading's history that we already Almost have. Almost taking cold records and personalizing them. Exactly. Right? We have house descriptions. We have architectural and historical descriptions of houses. We have photographs of the sure. houses. We have property valuations. But to then have a story or a picture um, to, to add, we'll just add another l layer to, to the uh, assets we've already amassed. Certainly the type of thing, where rather than just having the cold facts about a house, but knowing something about the people that have lived there really adds a, a level of depth to our understanding of what uh, that house has been through, what it's been like to live there, what, what, just what the history is, exactly. the social history of, of Reading, really. Can um, I interject? Oh, sure, here? absolutely. A little known fact that <laughs> I found out this spring is Kathy's house used to be the house of Needham Nichols, and Needham Nichols happens to be right here in the center of this picture. Okay. Distillery. <laughs> 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 the title of that picture is at the site of the pumping station. Okay. And um, when we photoshopped it, we found out that a little bit more was being pumped there than water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> one of the things I've always said about when you start digging into history is you can't be afraid of what you're going to find. You just have to plug forward and, and see what was there and not be embarrassed by it. So you've brought some a couple of items for us, Everett, also, to kind of show us a little bit about what we can do uh, with what we find and, therefore, why that's important for us to figure that out. So I know you've got a chart back here. Can you show us a little bit about what's on this chart and what we can do with this type of, of, of family history? Uh, sure. Um, Gene Underhill was the secretary at the high school for 30, approximately 30 years. And um, when she passed on, she wanted her pictures to be in memory. Mm -hmm. And we really wanted to do that, so we discovered that we had her mother's picture and her grandmother's picture and her great-grandmother's picture okay. and her great-great-grandmother's and her great-great-great-grandmother's. Wow. So actually we had six generations. And so when you, I put a title on it of six writing daughters, you would think that there were six sisters. <laughs> they're not. They're a, a child from a parent, from a parent, wow. from a parent, and it's very unique. Um, basically, uh, there's a feeling of the lifestyle of people is what really people want to know about. Mm -hmm. And Parker Tavern, you enter into a different period of time and you see the lifestyle. You can't know where you're going until you know where you've come from. Sure. And so I think it's very important to realize that uh, this, this lineage of people, even though they all happen to be Reddingites um, in one particular way or another, that is not exactly what we're talking about with the, the Mass Memories Project. They can just have had a connection to Reading. Right. These six daughters actually all lived here in Reading, and it's pretty unique. And we bought some items that belonged to each one of those ladies. Yeah, well, I was going to ask you about that, because you've really taken the, the collection of historical documents and facts and kind of made a hobby out of this, and, and to including these kind of collections. So can you share with us kind of what you brought here? Um, well, as I said, this is kind of like the extreme, I think, of what we would expect somebody to do. We're hoping extreme people come. Extreme history, I would Well, <laughs> one picture, two pictures, maybe, but uh, to have been able to put this is, I think, pretty sure. unique. And then what we had is one of these girls was, her mother died uh, when she was born, and so uh, she was taken in by another writing family, and she became known as Sis. Well, these are the spoons that belong to Sis. I think that's pretty unique. Um, and we have a tablecloth, a sham, uh, 
Thensina Hotwell Scott. And so this really identifies which of the young ladies it actually belongs to. Right. And so these items, although they're very tangible, they also tell you something about the lifestyle of these people if you stop and think about them. Okay. And part of what we're hoping will happen on this, on this day, in addition to people bringing in and sharing their photographs, is that they'll go back home and be able to take a look at things like this that they might have sitting right. in a china cabinet or in a box somewhere. And you know, take the time to, if they know it to write down something about the objects they have at home and take some time to document the objects that they own so right. that their children or grandchildren or great grandchildren will have a record so that it's not just, you know, a spoon sitting in a drawer somewhere, but it actually, sure. you know, we know who that belonged to and we know how it was used and we know why it was important to someone. So we're but hoping this will also inspire people to go back and look at their own history and Reading history and the buildings and such around them in Reading, you know, with a with a new eye and a new appreciation for the history of the town. Really helping people draw connections between the past and the pictures and the items and really kind of putting together a whole package there of, of historical interest. Yeah. And I often think this comes along with genealogy because then you know where you came from. Sure. You really know your roots. Sure. And there's one of the pictures up here. It's Clarence DeMar's house from 249 Forest Street. Well, I didn't think about the fact that there are other houses that I could have put on there where the family lived too. Yeah, and absolutely. Now I'll go back and add to it as I think yeah. about it. And really make a, a project, and it's not even your family. <laughs> no, it is. Well, actually, it is. Oh, it is. Okay. Selena Bailey, who was uh, the earliest of the girls here, uh, lived out on uh, Franklin Street. And when I went to do a little work, my great grandmother was a Bailey, and I went back, and Jean Underhill ended up being ends up being with 13th cousins once removed. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I hope I can document that now. <laughs> well, I just want to go over and recap everything that's going to happen here. The, the event is on October 24th. It's called the Mass Memories Road Show. And what we are asking people to do is to bring in their personal photographs uh, from their family, of their houses, of anything they can find that connects uh, them together with other people, or uh, whether they have lived in Reading their entire lives or whether they moved here last month. Um, and share those. Um, and then there's going to be uh, a form they fill out, and, and those pictures and photographs are going to be archived um, down at UMass Boston, mm -hmm. correct? Yep. Um, as well as at the Reading Public Library. They will also um, be cataloged and descriptors put on them. Sure. And then they w can be used by the Reading Historical Commission, the Antiquarian Society, RCTV, and English at Large all for educational purposes, as well as the Reading Public Library, because there are partnering organizations in the grant. Absolutely. So we really appreciate their support and hope that together we can do something really great with all of this. So just to, to remind people again, that's October 24th, uh, all day at the Reading Public Library? 11 to 3. 11 to 3. We could stay on if we have a huge crowd. <laughs> okay. So if the lines are there, they'll stay open. Um, but 11 to 3 at the Reading Public Library, October 24th. There is a website. Um, and that is, Heather, again, remind me. www.massmemories.net. www.massmemories.net. All right, and so people can find out a little bit more about the project. Um, they can check out, again, if, to remind them of the time and the date um, for the, Ma the Mass Memories Project at the Reading Public Library. Well, thank you all for visiting us today, and thank you to the prior uh, visitors that we had, uh, Mr. Carter and Nikita. Um, and there was someone else. Uh, no, no, that's everybody. Okay. Um, that we had on the show today. This has been Community Conversation, a show that talks about the things, events, and people of the town of Reading. My name is Kevin Vent. I thank you for joining us today. And I encourage you to take part in the Mass Memories Roadshow on October 24th at the Reading Public Library. Hope you have a good day. <laughs>